Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Tutorials. I'm Kim. I just wanted to make this really quick video to show you the quickest and the easiest method to use to make pom-poms. Of course, we all make pom-poms from time to time, whether or not we're making them with kids or popping them on a beanie or a pair of slippers or something. They are just wonderful. And but you don't want to spend heaps of time mucking around with the cardboard circle that we all learnt how to do in school. You may also have a pom-pom maker. They are fantastic, but I have found that they tend to fall apart. Those pom-poms tend to fall apart. So here is the quickest and easiest way to make pom-poms. Okay, you're going to need a couple of things and not that many your yarn of course whatever yarn you're going to use these are the pom-pom making station these are just a piece of fairly sturdy cardboard that I've cut to a couple of different sizes as you can see this one's twice the size of this one um, and I've covered them with packing tape just clear packing tape and that tape really helps for a couple of reasons and you'll see why you need a pair of fabric scissors um, you can use your normal um, sewing scissors but they are much smaller and everything's easier with a bigger sharper pair of scissors and just a little bit more tape. This of course is just normal cellar tape, um, but I've covered these with packing tape, with the wider packing tape, just makes life easy. So how do we do it? I'll try it on this one, not the giant one, because we'll be here all day. But essentially what you need to do first is after you've covered your um, cardboard with tape, just grab a piece of yarn and you know you want it to lay either end about that far across the end of the card so cut that and then we're going to secure that to the piece of card on either end with a piece of tape and this is the first place that this tape covering the cardboard is going to come in handy because it means that this tape will be really easy to pull off later. Then just flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So measure your yarn, doesn't have to be exact, snip it off. We just want one piece of yarn stretched the whole way across that and hanging out the edges. And I have them hanging out about that far. And what's that? Maybe... 15, 20 centimetres, maybe six, seven inches. Um, but it doesn't matter as long as you've got a decent tail because you're going to need to tie these together. Um, and just, again, secure it on both ends with a piece of tape. And that is all we needed that tape for. So then take your yarn and just lay it end across your card and start wrapping. Now, the... Generally, what I like to do is wrap across this way with yarn for about as wide for about as wide as this is wide. So um, it doesn't take long. Of course, when you're trying, trying to do it for the camera, everything's getting tangled up. Um, that's probably too wide. And just keep wrapping. I'll be back when I've wrapped it. Okay, so I'm happy with the amount of yarn that's on my card. Looks a little bit plump. How much yarn you put on is entirely up to you. I'm just going to snip that off. And now these pieces are going to be tied across um, each side. So we'll hold each side together with these pieces of yarn. And that's where the tape that we put on the cardboard comes in handy because it stops that tape from completely sticking to the cardboard. And you can, of course, reuse the cardboard again and again. So just peel off the tape from 
one side of your yarn and then bring it across and tie it up. And when you tie it up, it really is best when you do just a normal granny knot. But if you loop this through a couple of times, maybe four times like that, and then just pull it as tight as you can, get your muscles involved, and then just do it again. And I just wrap that three times on the second. Oops. And then just finish it off with a plain granny knot. And that'll hold nicely. So that's one side secure. And we just need to do the same thing with the other side. Take the tape off. It's way easier to prepare this ahead of time with this string under there before you wrap than try and get in there and drag it through. And just tie this one off, doing the, the multiple wrap. Three, four, and pulling it tight. And same again. And then just a plain granny knot. And that'll hold those edges in place. But as you can see, they're not connected to each other. So once we take this off, we're going to use these ends to bring them around and tie them so it connects the two sides together. But you can just, as you can see, my card is already bent a bit. Just bend it slightly and pull that off. That is the second place that the tape on the cardboard comes in handy because it enables it to slide off really easily. So just separate that before you cut it and bring the strings from one side around to the other side. And just get these ones out of the way and tie them up again in a similar fashion. they'll hold everything together nicely and then do the same with the ones from this side take them round to the other side and tie them and that's where this particular method is way superior to the pom-pom maker is that you actually get to secure your pom-pom um, in a couple of different steps if you use this method as opposed to the pom-pom maker which you really only just secure one way um, and I've found them coming apart so that's not ideal when you gift it to someone okay so we finished with this we can reuse that again at a later date to make exact replica pom-poms. And then you just bring in your scissors and go under your loops and cut the pom-pom. You might need to cut a few loops that don't that you don't catch in your initial pass. There we go, that was really tight. Okay, and now that 
is a fully secure pom-pom. So that literally takes a couple of minutes and that really is all. And as I said, you'll probably need to cut a couple of loops that didn't get cut initially. Um, and then it's just a matter of trimming it down. And I tend to try and grab whichever strands on either end are the longest. They're about the same, so there's not much difference there. Hang on to them and just start trimming. Um, and it's definitely better to do it on a smooth surface because these pieces of yarn will stick in fabric. Trim it up until it's a nice tight little ball of gorgeous pom-pomness. Trimming off all the straggly bits. There's a couple of loops that didn't get cut. Now, just definitely advise when you trim your pom-pom just to go slowly. If you start hacking into it, you'll end up with a, a much smaller pom-pom than you intended. And um, you just go slowly and give it a haircut. And there we have it, a beautiful pom-pom. These you can save and put those in. If you make amigurumi, you can stuff your amigurumi with these. They're beautiful for that. But otherwise, there is a beautiful pom-pom. And he's ready to go on a beanie or whatever. And you can, of course, tie it on with these so that's why we just when you put that that piece of string across here to begin with leave a fair fairy a fairly big tail um, because it'll enable you to use one of those as you tie on strings for your pom-pom later so what am I going to do with all of these pom-poms that's a good question. I'll have a video coming up with something to do that's absolutely adorable with pom-poms. But I hope you use this method. Just a piece of cardboard covered in tape and you make easy, secure pom-poms that will only take you a couple of minutes to make. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please take a second to do so and set the notifications to all using the bell icon and that'll make sure that you're notified whenever a new video drops on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.